Christ's command to his followers before his ascension to heaven was for them to be his witnesses in Jerusalem, all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Our Lord did not intend for the good news of his death and resurrection to stay local, but instead it was to be taken globally. In this third section of Acts, the adventure continues as the gospel is taken to the ends of the earth. Let's join Scott Pauley now for today's study. Recently in a conversation with someone, a man said to me, well, you know, there are many ways to God, many ways to heaven, many ways to believe. My friend, I just want to tell you, there's a right way and there's a wrong way. Uh, There's a true way and there is a false way. There is a broad way and there is a narrow way, and they do not lead in the same direction. Which way are you on today? Are you on the way to heaven? Are you on the Lord's way? Remember John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, He is the way. The way is not a a place. The way is not a church. The way is not uh, some um, process or or, uh, 10 steps to something. The way is Christ. It is knowing the Lord. Are you a person of the way? It might interest you to know that before believers in the first century were called Christians at Antioch, they were known in those early days as followers of the way. And that comes out today in our text in Acts chapter number 24 where the Apostle Paul is standing, being um, judged, defending himself, answering questions about his faith and about his message. We left off in verse 10 where he said, I do the more cheerfully answer for myself Uh, Let me read just a little more of his words, beginning in Acts 24, verse 11, because thou mayest understand that there are yet but twelve days since I went up to Jerusalem for to worship, and they neither found me in the temple disputing with any man, neither raising up the people, neither in the synagogues nor in the city, neither can they prove the things wherever they now accuse me. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, So worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets, and have hope toward God, which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. Now, after many years, I came to bring alms to my nation and offerings Whereupon certain Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with multitude nor with tumult, who ought to have been here before thee, and object if they had any ought against me. Or else let these same here say, if they found any evil doing in me while I stood before the council, except it be for this one voice, that I cried standing among them, touching the resurrection of the dead, I am called in question by you this day. And when Felix, verse 22, heard these things, having more perfect knowledge of that way, he deferred them and said, when Lysias, the chief captain, shall come down, I'll know the uttermost of your matter. And he commanded a centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty, and that he should forbid none of his acquaintance to minister or come unto him. I want you to mark in Acts 24, verse 14, the way. He said, they call this way heresy, but I want you to know this way is uh, the way of true worship. In verse 22, it's interesting that Felix, an unconverted man, this is not a believer, uh, the Bible says he had more perfect knowledge of that way. It was a specific way. It was a single way. Uh, It was a spiritual way. This, This was something that was very well known in the first century. And I think, frankly, we need a revival of even this kind of terminology. There is one way to God, and his name is Jesus Christ. There is one way to heaven, and that is God's way. You don't make your way. I don't make my way. Uh, All roads never lead to the same destination. Direction determines destination. And so the way that we must follow is the way that is given to us uh, through our Lord's message of salvation. Now, what do we learn about the way? Well, let me give you just a handful of thoughts. First of all, the way is the way of Scripture. 
Did you notice in verse number 14 that he said, uh, all the things which are written in the law and the prophets? In other words, he's referring to the whole of Scripture that has been given to this point, the, the Old Testament text that these people would have understood. And he said, I just want you to know I'm following that way. It's just another reminder that the Old and New Testament go together, that the Old Testament is all about Jesus. Uh, friend, the way must be the way of the Word. Get into the Word of God. Uh, forget all the best-selling books and find the book, God's book. Forget what men have to say. Let's find what the Holy Spirit had to say through uh, these authors that penned Holy Scripture to us. If you want to know the way, if you want to know the way you're supposed to go right now, get in the Word. Through the Word, God always shows the way. And then, not only is the way the way of Scripture, but it is always the way of faith. He said, believing. I love this in verse 14, believing all these things. Uh, so faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. There's a beautiful progression here. We come to the word. It shows us the way, and we believe. Uh, I tell you what we need. We need true believers today, not just people who call themselves believers, not just people who say they believe in God. Friends, I'll remind you, the devil believes in God. Uh, scripture teaches that the devil believes and trembles. He, he believes more than you believe. He's seen more than you've seen. But that doesn't make him a believer in the sense of living by faith. No, the way of God is the way of faith. The just shall live by faith. It is a, a faith journey from start to finish. So get in the word today and believe the Lord today. And then the way is not only the way of Scripture and the way of faith, but it is the way of worship. He said, so worship I, the God of my fathers. Worship grows out of faith. Worship God today. Live in the book, believe the Lord, and worship your God. This is God's way. It's what the fathers always wanted is true worshipers. And then it's the way of resurrection. Remember the one sticking point, the one issue that Paul said they didn't like, verse 15 and verse 21, was the resurrection of the dead. I'm glad to tell you that death is not the end. Maybe that's why Paul was not afraid to die when he stared death in the face. The writer of Hebrews says that the Lord has removed the fear of death. We're not subject to that bondage anymore. I'm not enslaved to that. I don't have to live every moment worried about dying and wondering about eternity. Why? Because there is life beyond the grave. There is the resurrection of the dead. And then finally, I would say this to you. The way is not only the way of the word and faith and worship and the resurrection. It is the way of hope. I love this phrase in verse 15. He said, I have hope toward God. I wonder, do you have hope today? Uh, do you live in that hope? Are you enjoying the hope of everlasting life? Not hopeful like it might happen, but hope as in certainty, confidence, no doubt about it. Because our hope is built on the promise of Almighty God. Oh, there, there are many ways to be religious. There are many ways to live, but there is only one way to know God and live with him forever. And that is through the way. And his name is Jesus Christ. By the grace of God today, would you first make sure you're on the way that you know the Lord Jesus? If you don't, repent and believe the gospel. Right where you are, look to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner and I can't save myself, but I believe you died for me and rose from the dead. Save me now. And the Lord Jesus will come to live in your heart and put you on the way. And then if like me, you say, oh, I'm, I'm one of the people of the way. I'm one of the followers of that way. Then share the way with others because there are many Felixes out there who need to hear it. They've heard something about it. But they need to know that the way is Jesus Christ. Though no more scripture is being written, the story of the furtherance of the gospel is being written at this very moment, and we get to be part of that story. The heart of our Savior is as passionate for the lost today as it was just before he ascended in Acts 1. Will you get in on what God is doing in the world today to reach the lost with the gospel? This is why Enjoying the Journey exists, to encourage and to equip you in the work of the gospel. 
Whether it is through the daily broadcast or the many resources on our website, Scott and all of us on the Enjoying the Journey team are passionate about people coming to know Christ as Savior. We pray that you truly will enjoy the journey, but we also pray that you will bring others with you on your journey of following Christ.